before we start, I'd like to give a who shout out to all my Patreon members. All credit goes out to them as it's their support that is helping me create these videos. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to FM Scout's YouTube page. Peace and enjoy the video. Hello guys, I have created a new Discord server called RDF Tactics F. Um, it will be a Discord server where you can share your tactics, upload your tactics, even self-promote your own stuff. Please, please come and join and we can talk some football manager stuff. It will be one of the best communities around. Thank you guys. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to FM Scout's YouTube channel. It is RDF. And today we have another recreation to show you guys. This time it will be Luis Enrique's time at Barcelona. This was requested in the YouTube comments, I think on my previous video or even the video before that. And I thought this is very interesting. Of course it's Barcelona and we're expected to win things. But Enrique set his team up slightly different to what you would expect from a normal Barcelona side. Under Enrique, you notice that the front three, the MSN partnership, Messi, Neymar and Suarez, you notice that they played a lot more direct, a lot more quicker and the counter-attacking was a lot more effective. Previous manager, I think Tito Martino and Pep Guardiola, of course, focused a lot more on winning the ball back quick as possible so they can be on possession and they maintained possession a lot more better than Luis Enrique's sides. One thing you notice about Luis Enrique's sides is that his wide men often stretch play as wide as possible and that allows the two centre midfielders, which I have as Mazzala and advanced playmakers, to slightly position themselves in those half spaces and this can create gaps, overloads and just potential dangerous attacks against the opposition. One thing I also noticed is that his midfield wasn't necessarily a priority when it comes to building attacks. The midfield was still very, very important to the system as they created space and they actually occupied the opposition. But when the team is building up, you would notice a lot more that the ball went to the wider players. If the ball went to the wing backs, you would notice that a lot of the times they will play the more direct passes into the front wingers. Also off the ball, which I noticed is that they didn't take many, many risks. They wasn't very counter pressing. They did press to an extent, but what you would notice is that they were a lot more reserved than the previous teams, just to be a little bit more solid. And you would notice that within his first season, when he only conceded around 21 goals, which at that time was the best defence in the La Liga. When it comes to the front three partnership, you will notice that they had a few duties, a few responsibilities. They were responsible for creating attacks. They were also responsible for finishing the attacks. So with the front three, what I tried to do to replicate this is make them all creative players, players that have creative freedom, but also players that focus on getting into the box, scoring goals, maybe even shooting. But now let's look at the tactic. Let's see how I have recreated this system. So first off, the mentality, which I went for is positive. You could have went attacking arguably. Attacking may be better when you're playing against the bigger team. So you can take a little bit more risk and try and exploit the bigger teams a bit more. But for the template, we will go with the positive mentality. Attacking width is stretched to extremely wide. When we're building up attacks, like I said, we want those wider players around the byline once the play starts to develop and once one of these players get the ball we are going to want them to be coming inside and more direct towards the goal with the approach play we don't really have a focus but what we do have is play out of defense for the passing directness and the tempo as you can see we have left it on standard and slightly higher this gives us the option to play more direct as this is a more positive mentality of course and also the tempo is higher so we can get the ball working slightly quicker with the direct football we want the ball to get to the front three as quick as possible but doing that without losing the possession too much. When the ball is in the final third, 
We do have low crosses and work the ball into the box. I feel obviously we want to be creating more clearer cut opportunities. So on the wing backs to try and help with this, we do have cross from the byline, but also cross less often and when it comes to the creative freedom of course once the ball gets into the final third of the areas we want a lot of expression we want the players to take some responsibility especially the front three in transition like i said a little earlier we are not going to be focusing on counter pressing too much we want to have some stability to us so when the possession has been lost we have no instruction for that when the possession has been won though we are going to be countering because enrique's team was very very deadly on their counter attacks when the goalkeeper is in possession and he's distributing it we are going to be looking for the fullbacks so the fullbacks can get the ball down the byline onto the wingers again get the ball to those front three players as quick as possible out of possession we do have a defensive trap so the defense line will be pushing up a little bit the line of engagement is much higher let's try and stop them playing not making it too comfortable for them to get out from the back and the defense line of course is on higher to try and squeeze the gap in midfield a little the defensive width is left on standard when it comes to marking and tackling we are going to be using a tighter mark to try and get in our opposition's face with the pressing intensity on more urgent now let's talk about the player roles and their instructions For the goalkeeper, we just have a sweeper keeper. He has no instructions. For the wing backs, on both wing backs, they have the same instructions. So for the wing backs' instructions on support, they have more direct passes, cross less often, cross from the byline, shoot less often, and stay wider. For the central defence pairing, we have gone for the central defender, which would be the Mascherano, and then we have the ball playing defender, which would be obviously the Gerard Piquet. These two complement each other very well because of course the ball playing defender will be taking a lot more risk and the central defender will play a lot more safe. In the defensive midfield position, we just have the defensive midfielder on support. We're asking him to hold his position in the midfield, also close down a little more and tackle harder. Before, I did have a deep line playmaker but then that player started to receive a lot more touches which... If you notice that Biscuits under Luis Enrique, compared to other managers, previous managers, his touches on the ball were considerably less. So for that reason, I went for the defensive midfielder instead of a deep lying playmaker. And as we have an advanced playmaker in midfield, we don't want the ball coming inside the midfield too often. So in the midfield, we have the advanced playmaker. He has it passed shorter, roam from position stay wider of course to stretch the pitch and to close down the ball more try and get that possession with the mazala we also have a mazala on attack he has it past it shorter and closed down more of course he is hard coded to stay out wider and move into channels again to stretch the play for the wider players for the messi and the neymar which would have been is inside forward on support we are asking them to roam from position try and pick pockets so they can be effective stay wider and close down more both of them have the exact same instructions and for the complete forward which would be Suarez on his instruction he also has closed down more but he's hard coded to hold up the ball more move into channels roam from positions this is all great to help create that space for our players to move into but now we have looked at the tactic let's look at our achievements and what we have achieved when we go to competitions you can see here that barcelona we won the league we played 38 we won 31 of those games drawing five losing two with 98 points on the board the top goal scorer in the league was lionel messi with 34 goals that is no surprise really really no surprise in the champions league though we won that also winning 3 0 in the final against manchester city so it's very very pleasing to see how our counter-attacking system be a more tick attacker system which is actually managed by pep guardiola in the copa del rey i don't even want to talk about it we got knocked out by girona who are in liga la liga 2 i don't want to talk about that let's move on <laughs> When it comes to the squad stats, and like we said, we are trying to create the MSN partnership. And guess what? I'm very, very happy with what I achieved because between the front three, we managed to score 79 goals 
whilst getting 36 assists. Someone else can do the maths, but together, that is over 100 goals when it comes to goals involvement. And in the league, like I said before, Luis Enrique did get the best defence in the league, and guess what? So did I. He did manage to beat me by one goal with the goals for, I got 109, but with the goals against, I did beat him considerably by a big margin with only 12 goals conceded and a 97 goal difference. Totally incredible. But when it comes to the season goals and stats, as you can see, Messi has 38, Griezmann has 30, and the other part of that front three would have been Dembele with 11. Coutinho did fill in a few times. He got six of those goals. The most assist in this team was Lino Messi. Then it was Jordi Alba. Coutinho also got some nice assists. And when we do compare our stats against the other teams in the league, you would notice that we got 54 possession, average possession, which is very, very good. We are trying to play a more direct counter system, but we managed to get some nice nice possession stats that is very nice but bear in mind we are Barcelona we have some quality in our team when it comes to goals we smashed it 109 goals the next best was 72 there's just no comparing in that when it comes to goals scored from corners we only scored five but we did make it up in free kicks we have Lionel Messi that explains the goals from free kicks. Pass completion ratio, again, very, very good numbers. We have 88% in the league. That is second best in the league, just behind Real Madrid. And passes completed, we were seventh in that. Chances created, just two behind Valencia. Valencia must have done very, very well. Finishing third, creating 105. We did create 103, so we still managed to create a lot amount of chances. But when it comes to the other stats here, you can see we just dominated with shots on target ratio. We also got the most shots on target, best conversion rate, 14%. Fouls against, we were just completely fouled, of course, when we have Dembele on one wing, Messi on the other. And dribbles per game, we're averaging around 21 dribbles per game. Conceded, we only conceded 12. We got 27 clean sheets, so very very good stuff when it comes to the goal types as you can see when it comes to play shots that was our way of scoring we scored 57 of those when it comes to headers we scored 14 and penalties we actually scored 10 but as you can see here our conversion rate in the league was just top top quality 67 chances created 56 of those went in the net and then against only 12 and then only 7 conceded. So very, very good numbers for the side. I'm very, very happy with this creation. Very, very pleased. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you for staying in tune. I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Please also stay safe out there and I will see you soon. Love you guys.